Morning folks, I'm Alex Harris, I'm race director of the Munga and I'm standing here in Carbon Bike Repair, uh, the guys that we have a collaboration with and I want to show you the bike that uh, has just gone under 10 days on the Freedom Challenge, the first bike to do so. Awesome. And so from the outset, power output on an ultra endurance race has to do with comfort. The more comfortable you are, the more able you're going to be to put out power. And if you're uncomfortable, your focus is going to be on trying to get comfortable and so you can no longer put out power. And the truth is, when you look at the numbers of the Freedom Challenge, the record, you, you've got to do about 12 kilometers an hour for 20 hours and do that for 10 days. I mean, the number sounds so small, so slow, it's crazy. But when you factor in sleep, when you factor in the portages, when you're walking, obviously that number comes up. But still the ability to put out some kind of power after seven, eight days is a function of how comfortable you are. And so the starting point of this journey is the bike. This is a Momsen Viper Ultra. And we've been pushing this bike as the perfect bike to do our race, the Mungo, which is a thousand kilometer non-stop five day event. Why? Well, because it's bigger, it's a full sus bike, it's got wider carbon. It's just generally going to be more comfortable. You're able to put two full bottles in the inner frame. And so this was the bike I used last year's Freedom. Uh, in fact, what you're looking at now is pretty much what I rode about 1,500 kilometers last year before pulling the plug off to eight days. Number of reasons, I'd made some strategic errors. My head just wasn't in the game. And so after eight days, I pulled the plug. But it's the same rims. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about what's been changed. Okay, so let's... Let's start off with uh, the wheels and the tires. So I spoke about comfort. I ran two 2.4. These are Maxxis Arden tires. Um, I mean, as a general principle, you want to go wider. And the wider tire allows you to go a little bit softer. A wider tire with equal pressures gives you a, a, a better rolling resistance. It's a complicated reason why, but that's a, a, another time. So I rode 2.4s and I started with 2 bar. I normally ride them at about 1.4. But I try and start them a little bit more and generally the, the pressure, you lose a little bit. The integrity of the wheels was so amazing that after about four or five days, I had not dropped any pressure and I could feel it. My hands could feel it, my feet could feel it. And so I started letting out a little bit, pressure, a little bit of pressure to try and get to about 1.8 bar. Anyway, same tires, 2.4 both sides, uh, Maxxis Ardent. The rims are stands, uh, the, the Arch CB7 carbon rims, the exact set of rims that I rode last year. They were built by Neville in our local bike shop, Linden Cycles. I think he's the best in the business. And all I did for this year's race was I just got him to check the tension of the spokes uh, and that everything was still good. Front hub, I run a dynamo hub. It's pretty critical on something like the Freedom Challenge because if you're riding 20 hours, you're sleeping three hours a night, you don't have a lot of time for admin, and so you want to be reasonably self-sufficient with lighting. And so I've got a, a SP Dynamo Hub, which powers an SP light, the Supernova. It's not the brightest on really slow, and so you, you want to have a really good helmet light as well, but, but more about that. So front hub, I've got the SP Dynamo Hub, and back hub, I run a Hope 4. It's just been bomb-proof after doing five freedoms now and plenty races with lots of mud and water, absolutely bomb-proof. I've got a 1 by Eagle uh, SRAM setup cassette and a 34 in the front. And I found I could ride most of the hills. I went into the race a lot lighter, about 8 kilograms lighter, which is something that I historically haven't done, and it made a huge difference on my ability to ride uh, almost all of the hills. Look, some of the stuff is really steep and grovelly, and if you're doing 4Ks now and you get off and you push, you, you know, you're not making any material difference. But it's a standard Eagle setup. So let's start uh, from the front and work our way back. So handlebar, this is a standard far bar, one of the aero bars. It's, it's the built-in carbon slight uh, sort of front hand resting position. It's not a true time trial bar, but what it does allow you to do is it gives you multiple hand positions. And the challenge with ultra endurance events, you get ulnar and radial nerve impingement. And even now I've got some nerve damage, but that's years and years of collective uh, I, I get it onset relatively quickly so standard bar i've taped it up with some padding just with some cell phone to give me additional padding 
and then I've got the ergo uh, bars that are slightly raised to, to keep my hand position reasonably neutral. And really this just gives you multiple hand positions, but there's a lot of things you can do about that. My brakes are Shimano XT, so while I, I'm, I'm running the gears and the chain setup is all SRAM, XT brakes absolutely bomb proof. Uh, I've never had an issue on three tour divides, five freedoms now, really, really bomb proof. That's the Supernova Light. Uh, I'm running, obviously one of the differences of the Freedom is you're not allowed any electronic navigation, no GPS. So it's a little bit old school and I've got a Borgia that's got my cues. I put my maps on here. Last year I was a little bit cocky. I went with very little maps. And even though I know the route well, what you don't realize is that at two in the morning when your, your brain is hyperglycemic and sleep deprived, your cognitive ability is impaired and you literally sometimes cannot tell your left from your right. This year I carried all my maps, obviously not all the time, you can send them to your boxes, but I would set them up here and then I've got a standard cat eye wireless um, bike computer just spitting out uh, distances. And so the combination of the maps, the queues, the boxes, locations uh, and the bike computer is really how uh, you, know, you kind of navigate on a day-to-day -day basis. This is a Revelate uh, top tube gas tank and in here I would carry my immediate uh, go-to stuff. So obviously my cell phone would be in there, uh, my, my little bit with some money and a couple of cue cards are in there, some sun cream, an extra set of batteries. I'm just going to lay all of this stuff out so you can see exactly how much junk fits into all of this. Two loops. Uh, so the Freedom is sponsored by Squirt, so these were available pretty much everywhere. Uh, but I also carried an emergency wet lube just in case, and I used this once or twice on day one, surprisingly. We had really cold, wet, muddy conditions. Uh, so the two lubes sit in there, and they get used frequently. A compass, and well, a stripped down uh, silver compass, and, and I actually used that maybe three or four times. And really, again, it's in the dark of the night, two, three in the morning, when you're a bit muddy, and you, you just want to get a, a confirmation on a bead, right? That's the direction, and off you go. Absolutely critical if you're going fast. And then Stan's fantastic new uh, dart system. I did not use it once, so the tires you see there are the tires I ran. 2,200 odd kilometers, not one single puncture. But if I had, I would have used the Stan's dart system. Go and check out uh, you know, how clever that little system is. Light and efficient. Right, so that's my gas tank top tube uh, by Revelate. The reason I use Revelate, because you'll notice the other bags are uh, Apidura. The gas tank has a slightly bigger attachment system, and with the bigger frame of the Ultra, I needed that. So that's the gas tank. Underneath this, and we'll show you a separate uh, shot of this, there's an in-frame storage area. This little bag here, little, but in here are all the things that I really don't want to have to use. These are the kind of things that I, that I would use if I had an emergency. So there's some extra dart plugs, uh, some patches, because in there I've got a tube, a tube a liter tube. I'll pull all the stuff out. So my little bag, I've just dropped my power link. Let me just pick it up. Uh, well, there's a power link down there. An extra, what is this called again? Just remind me. <laughs> My brain's gone up like last week. It's a, it's a, it's a valve. It's a valve. There we go. Extra valve, couple of valve inserts, uh, some power links. So again, this is stuff that you hope you don't need to use, but you know sometimes you end up using it. Continuing in here, some tire levers, a couple of small plastic tire levers. It keeps on coming. Two spare brake pads. A needle. And that's if I have a really bad sidewall blowout. Uh, in there, it's actually wrapped up, but it's a needle and some dental floss. And if I had a sidewall with a boot, so let me just pull out the boot here. And this couldn't uh, effectively plug up that sidewall. I could stitch it up. I've never had that issue in, in, in a race. But again, you've got the ability to solve the problem. Then a couple of really critical bolts. Saddle bolts. My 2012 race. Well, if you know that story, it was a disaster and for five days because I never had a spare saddle bolt and I've got a couple of other key little bolts there. I've got the, the middle press section of a chain brake. That's a, a bolt that can often break. 
so there's an extra one in there and then finally one more thing a spoke key and I have taped an extra spoke there obviously there's certain conditions where you break a spoke you can do nothing about it I've never had a broken spoke but all of that came out of that tiny in-frame storage bag okay let's move a little bit back so the great thing about the Ultra is two full-size bottles in I mean the geometry has been des designed around that you can see that sort of push piece and these are 750 mils socks why because we knew temperatures were going to be hot and if you ever had a, a dad or if you, you might you might remember going on road trips where you flipped uh, those old canvas things poured them with water and they kept you cool well I raced the mangas in the middle of December summer 45 degrees and so guys are becoming really creative around how they cool water many many options the socks one has probably been popularized by mark Woolno, super experienced and uh let me tell you this drops the temperature of your water so you just wet the cloth 10 degrees maybe 15 degrees it makes an incredible difference and then a third bottle i used a 500 ml which i lost in bavian's clough uh, this is a 750 a 750 will bump uh at at, at full at, at full uh, uh, suspension so a 500 ml you're perfect and you're good to go Okay, moving back, so now we've got this back little bag. This actually is flipped around, but it doesn't really matter. And, and what I carried in here, uh, spare cable, the tuba liter tube. Again, if you have a problem with your side wall and your tubeless goes for a ball and you can't repair it, you've got a backup option. You saw the, the patches were in the front bag, my multi-tool. A lasagne carbon, I mean this thing's been absolutely bomb proof. That's the extra bolt that I carry in case that thing breaks. You can't break the chain. And I have broken one of those before in the Freedom. Small little, uh, this is just a little Leatherman. It's got a tiny pliers, which is critical if you want to replace your chain. So I packed in my box roughly a thousand kilometers into the race a spare chain. When I got to that station, I swapped out the chain. Uh, and that's just the longevity, but I find that the SRAM, the Eagle stuff, wears incredibly well. So I didn't carry that with me, but just to show you, I did swap it out. And that's where that little tool comes in use. And it's got a couple of other things. Really small little Leatherman, very handy with the pliers. Uh, bomb adapter with two bombs, and one, they're down there. And then a little bag just with some more goodies, all critical stuff if you ever have to... Uh, you know, use it. So what's in here? Couple bolts. Actually, these are the saddle bolts I was telling you about. Those other bolts were front bolts. Then I've got a spare set of cleats. I have broken a cleat before. That is a spare little adapter that allows your supernova, your dynamo hub to plug. If that thing goes, you, you're going to lose all your power. It weighs nothing but critical little bolts. That's a hanger. I've never broken a hanger, but if you break a hanger on something like the Freedom, it's game over couple of spare batteries for my bike computer so all of that went into that little bag a whole lot of extra junk that stays on there right moving to the back okay we can get into this guy so saddlebag now one of the key things if you want to go sub 10 or if you want to do any really fast time on the freedom i guess would be quicker than 14 days you've got to go light that means different things for different people i've got a lot of experience in cold and wet just through our expedition over the years in our business and so I am able to go probably lighter than most guys having a good sense of adaptation but a key principle for me was nothing on your back and uh, I'm convinced that's the, the way to do this anything on your back that way translates to just extra pressure on your touch points and extra power output because if you've got something on your back you're going to tend to fill it up with stuff so what have we got on top here? This little bag is a tracker bag. It's just a mesh bag that allows you to put your tracker in. But inside there I had my medical kit, just some tablets, first aid. So really my medical kit consisted of a, a space blanket, critical, some plasters and some tablets in there. That's the first aid kit. Uh, and then Apidura, it's the smallest one they do. I think it's only about five liters. But again, in winter, uh, I had the 8 litre bag last year, so and the only difference was uh, a thicker outer top But let's get in here and just see how much this bag can take All right, so what do I actually wear? Maybe before I show you that bag on me I had a very light sort of meshy vest. This is a craft vest Fantastic top that stayed on me all the time 
Then my, my bike shirt, my actual riding shirt, this is just a standard uh, riding shirt that I would wear over that. Pop that down there. Uh, chamois, very critical because the bum does get sore. So my go-to Ultra Endurance is the ASOS, the Ultra Endurance bib. The style has varied over the years. This is the latest one. It's not my favorite. I find there's a little bit more pressure in the, the nether region. And I'm not sure why that is. I think the, you know, the, the, they're all slightly different, but that's a personal choice. But that's my go-to chamois is the ASOS Ultra Endurance bib. Uh, I use two buffs pretty much all the time. You know, so one around my neck as a, as a kind of a face mask early mornings. One over my head, you lose 60% of your heat through your head. So this is a super light and a, a, a highly effective piece of gear in retaining and losing heat if, if you, you're feeling too cold or too warm. So those are a couple of buffs go down there. Right, socks. Uh, some thin socks, which I use most of the time, and then a, a thermal pair that I'll show you now in there. Photochromatic. Oakley, I mean this has been my go-to lens for 15 years. You can wear them through the day, through the night, and obviously if you're riding 20 hours, a lot of the time you're in the dark. You don't want to take your glasses off because dust and all of that, but your eyes are going to fatigue. So, I mean, just an absolutely, probably the single best lens on the planet when it comes to ultra riding. Uh, gloves, just short. These are zero, a little bit of padding, and I'll show you the thermal liners that I added when things were a little bit cold. My helmet, with that extra light, I spoke about a, a good light. This is a Petzl and absolutely bomb proof, but guys use all kinds of things. Critical in, the, in, in really slow, if you're going up super slow stuff in the dark, or if you're going down really technical stuff slowly, then you lose your, your brightness out of your Dynamo Hub because you're not turning as much, and then you need a really good light. And then on my feet, um, the Lake, these are the MX, the 1618 Juros. Same pair I used last year, uh, you know, so because you do so much walking on the Freedom up a whole lot of passes, you can't go, I don't think, in a, in a, in a super slim carbon, uh, you know, should you need something that's got a little bit of comfort that's still reasonably firm, but that's not going to deteriorate. So a great all-round shoe. I've got a couple of little personal hacks to tweak it, but those are the shoes. Okay, so that was the stuff that I would wear pretty much all the time, and this was the stuff that I would add when things got cold. Arm warmers. These are the ASOS, they winter arm warmers. They're strangely lighter than most summer arm warmers. And obviously, riding in, in, in this time of year on Freedom, I wasn't riding in a long sleeve top, so hence arm warmers. This is not something I would use in a June Freedom out of interest. Those are the arm warmers. Glove liners, so these I would just slip on and then slip this through my gloves, just to give me a little bit of added warmth you know, guys made a big thing about the heat, but it was still cold over some of those passes in the dark of the night. And you forget when you're hypoglycemic, your cellular respiration, your ability to generate energy from metabolizing food decreases. So you actually become cold simply because you're not eating enough and you're burning so much uh, of what you are eating. So a couple of thin glove liners, thermal socks. And I wore these a handful of times, and I still had numb feet, interestingly, and to chat to a couple of guys who raced uh, this year in October, they'll tell you there were some really, really cold evenings. So those are my thermal sock liners. Right, dry bag, what have I got in here? Well, probably my single most effective piece of gear that I own. It's a little down vest, believe it or not, it fits into a Oakley sunglass bag made by Montbell. A thousand full. Uh, I mean, this thing is just unbeatable. You can't wear it when it's wet, so you've got to be careful because if it's wet, throw it away. But uh, I would wear this often, just leaving a station after sleeping. So three in the morning, when your metabolism is slow, you, you, your knees are sore, you're tired, and you're cold, you know, and you're not w moving fast enough to sweat. So incredible piece of gear, little down vest from uh, from Mont Bell, and then my what else is in here so yeah i've got so this this is a compulsory piece of kit leg warmers and i'm running out of space on the floor just to show you how much you can actually fit 
when you're quite creative. So as much as it looks like I went super light, there's a lot in here. My wet top, Montaigne, super light. Not when I put it into a vest. I ripped that climbing through a, a barbed wire fence. So if it had rained really bad, this thing would have been probably pretty useless. But uh, yeah, just super lightweight, uh, breathable, and really high quality. And that's the key. I mean, the gear you gain for such a long period of time, you've got to make sure that it's going to work. I used these a couple of times. I lost one somewhere in Statane's. Uh, this is Montaigne again, and it's a Gore-Tex Mitt. I mean, it weighs like 10 grams, so I would sometimes have my glove, my glove liner, and then I would literally put that Gore-Tex Mitt over it just to break the wind. Uh, and give me a little bit of extra warmth, and I used that a handful of times. Weighs absolutely nothing, fits into that bag. That was so that. So I actually had three gloves, little gilet, telling one of my sponsors, thanks Hilton. So this little guy, super light, and I would wear this probably every day, alternating. You know, sometimes you couldn't always put on the down vest, so this would make a great alternative. And so between the five layers, what you've got here is the ability to be flexible and to quickly adjust and adapt depending on the conditions uh, and that's it everything in that bag and XT pedals also bomb proof not as light as the XTR uh, but when it comes to ultra endurance I think they are hard to they're hard to beat okay so for the last couple of things that I haven't shown you uh, they're quite hidden my backlight another compulsory aspect and then under that is a whole lot of duct tape very useful you can do all kinds of things with gorilla tape when you need to but then exciting i spoke about the in-frame storage of the momsen you've got the one piece in here and the second piece is in there and you'll be amazed what you get in in these two so i've shown you what's in there but let me show you what i keep in here again this is stuff that i hope i don't need to use and so i've taped it up just because well, if I, if I have to use this stuff, I've got time on my hands. You know, I can sit around, contemplate, laugh, you know, whether I should be doing this as I pick away the duct tape. But it does mean that you're definitely not going to lose it. All right, let's see, where am I in there? Almost there. Uh, Okay, in this little pocket, believe it or not, I have my bomb and my little pump. And you ask, well, how can that be a pump? Well, let me show you. It's an art pump. I have tested it. It takes about 300 pumps to get enough pressure into a 2.4. But again, it's an emergency. You know, if you're going to take 10, 15 minutes to pump up, well, that's what's required. And so this little genius device, uh, it's a piece of carbon. And there you go, that little art pump bomb tucked away, hidden. All the stuff you really don't need is out of the way. Uh, and there's no chance you're going to lose it, which often happens with things that are, you know, bombs that are visible. You lose it, suddenly you need it, you're in all kinds of trouble. Great, that's the Momsen Ultra, the only bike to go under 10 days on the Freedom. So maybe just a little bit about our collaboration with Carbon Bike Repair and the Munga. So Carbon Bike Repair is a business that was started in the UK and it was so successful that it's come to South Africa, they've been here for about three years and they specialize in, in two things really. One is, is obviously repairing carbon frames and to such a degree that they, they're kind of like a new frame. But the second aspect is in doing bespoke resprays and, and really something like that, this fantastic Munga grit frame. And so the idea is that, so all our Munga riders uh, have an opportunity to come and, and do a, a bike check and a frame check post-race as part of our collaboration, but also do something bespoke with their frame. And so this frame that's got battered now on two freedoms and Statane's Clerf and looks like it's been through a wall is, is going to end up uh, something like that which is super special um, and I mean you can you can do anything you want and you can end up with a, a, a frame that looks that is really effectively brand new but tailored to your desire remember 
This is a lifestyle for a lot of people. It's an expression of who they are, what they're passionate about, and where they spend an enormous amount of their time, energy, and money. And so for us, it's a super exciting journey. We've just started it. But you know, we're going to go with this, uh, with this ultra-important life repair. Life's going to go to some exciting places. Thank you.